Hello and welcome to the county of Shropshire. I'm on my way to a lake for a few hours tench fishing this evening. It's June, you wouldn't necessarily think so from the weather out there. Quite wet and not necessarily warm either. Normally in June, I work in professional football. It's a busy time for me because we have the pre-European preparations that take place. So in recent years, I've been in the likes of Portugal on training camps, um, Plain Rangers in Scotland, St Johnston, Aberdeen, Hearts, all in behind closed doors, friendlies, of course. It's a hard life sometimes, but as they say, someone has to live it. But now, with the coronavirus situation, there's no football, although the English league has now started in Wales, where I work, we're still somewhat behind, so the new season, even the training, hasn't begun yet. So I'm enjoying the easy, relaxed life. In fact, since we've been allowed to fish again, May the 13th, I've been 50 times, this will be my 51st session. I don't usually get to do that much fishing at this time of the year, or if I do, they tend to be short trips, lure fishing or a quickie on a lake or something like that when I'm on the way to work or on the way back. Although not in June but in July when the Champions League and the Europa League games start I have been fishing in the likes of Croatia and Macedonia I take a little travel rod with me and I always have a look at the hotel that we're staying in prior to leaving and if there's water then I'll do a little bit of fishing but now I'm on home territory and as I said off to do some tench fishing and when you see me next, I will be at the water's edge and hopefully I'll have a tench or two to show the camera. Before I do get there though, thinking of football and thinking of life in general, you never know where life takes you. 2019, I've got great memories of working in the beautiful game and prior to going full time with the New Saints Football Club, I was a Wolverhampton Wanderers season ticket holder for many, many years. I saw Wolves right at the very top, right at the very bottom, and everywhere else in between. And it would have taken, I knew, something pretty special to wrench me away from that. Well, working in the game, that was what eventually took me away. So, hardly a hardship again to do that. But 2019, in the Champions League, I got to know the people from FC Copenhagen and I was working at a game involving the club. And of course the manager, if you are deeply into European football and also a Wolves fan, is Stoller Solbakken. So I got to meet Solbakken and I did say to the guys from the media team, could I do a little interview with him? It's always courtesy to ask just a few questions because I explained to them I was a, a well, I am a Wolves fan. I was a Wolves season ticket holder when he was the manager. And in the end, they, they said to me, because they didn't want to do a press conference before the game, they said, would you like to do the press conference for us, for our fans back home in Denmark? So I'll tell you what, that was great. You never know where life takes you. Seven years ago, I was in the South Bank watching the man himself in the dugout at Molyneux. Just one of the crowd of 20, 30,000 people. And then there I am in a room, an interview room, the boards up, everything set up for the press conference and a one-on-one -on -one asking him questions and doing an interview with him. You never know where life takes you. One funny thing though is when I first met Stoller Solbakken, I got chatting with him and told him I was a, a Wolverhampton Wanderers supporter. And he said to me, I'm surprised you want to talk to me. Love the sense of humour. If you are a Wolves fan and you can remember, didn't really work out for Solbakken at Molyneux. But 
football is like life in general. You have to sometimes shake the dust off your feet and then get on with the rest of your life. And he's certainly done that. So I enjoyed that and I enjoy football. And it will be a couple of weeks at least until I'm back on track fully. So I'm certainly enjoying the fishing life at the moment. Anyway, I've just arrived in Bridge North, not that far to go now. So next time you see me, I really will be at the lake and hopefully with a tench to show you. And within seconds, and I mean seconds, of the bait hitting the deck, I've just hooked, played and netted this tench. It looks quite dark. I think I'm going to move the camera around to get a clearer image. That's better. There you go. Not a massive fish, but whatever the species, whatever the tactics or the methods, it's always good to get off the mark with the first one. As you can see, I'm into a second fish. The key, if possible, is to keep it away from the reeds. I have a channel of open water in front of me and then to the side, well, we have reeds. And that's of course where fish will instinctively head. Although it tried its best to evade the net, in the end I won. And this is the fish in question. I'm ready to cast out again. As you can see there, I've got a bucket of brown crumb and corn. And the business end, that's what it's all about. That's an SBS popper. No, it's not a popper, it's an SBS sinker. An SBS sinker is a corn shaped boilie. And I love it in situations like this because in the swim, I've got numerous small fish that are constantly plucking at the bait. Now, if I was fishing with real corn, within a short period of time, that bait would be sucked and there'd be just a skin left. But as I've got the corn shaped boilie, which is, which is hard, that stays there until the tench comes along. As you can see, into another fish. And I did mention that they go into the reeds. However, I am fishing about a length or so off the reeds. So when I do hook a tench, it initially goes into open water. Play it, tire it out, and then bring it in. And I think this one has found some weed out there. I'm fishing with the right tackle. It's not just about the line strength, but also the rod as well. The best fish of the session so far. This is one of the smaller ones actually, although I I'm sure as you can see, it's not exactly a small tench. Nice one. Some quality fish in this particular lake. I've just had another one and released it and what appeared in the net? A tiny perch. I can't get away from my favorite species, can I? Anyway, like the bigger tench before it, this one is also going back. I'm enjoying this. I tell you what, it's been so busy. I haven't had time to empty my flask yet. So that's unusual because I do like my tea and I tend to get through it quite quickly. I'm on a Kimber Freeliners water, by the way. It's not a day ticket. It's just for members. But 
as I often say, there is a waiting list. You can get your name down. And I've just started today, actually, a page on my website where I'm putting all my Kimber, Freeliners, Angling Club blog entries together. So starting this year, 2020, if you go to the menu on the website, have a look. And if you're a new member, hopefully some uh, tips there on the venues that are on the club portfolio, good selection of waters. If you've been a, a member for a while, then like, if you're not a member, hopefully inspiring as well, because that's what we have to do, don't we, in life. Inspire people. The internet in general is quite dark and murky at the best of times. So if we can inspire and encourage and build up people, it's better than dragging people down. Anyway, I'm gonna bring this video to an end now. I'm getting stacks of little bites out there where the smaller fish are picking up the bait. No doubt I will have more tench unless I catch a, a monster. This will be my last clip. Out to about yourself, tight lines, and don't forget, check out the website. Unless you're on there already, if you're watching this on my site, I'm gonna get a bite any any moment now. I can I can just I can just tell. But tight lines and I'll see you soon.